Hey Star Trek fans, Dan Gunther here. Welcome to the June 2019 episode of the Ractigino Roundup. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. We've been busy, of course, with Star Trek Discovery, and uh, it's taken me a little while to get back into doing these videos, but I'd like to try and get back to them as much as possible. This is a monthly roundup of all the news from the last month, as well as what you can look forward to in the current month for Star Trek releases and birthdays and other things of note. So without further ado, let's jump to the news. So the big news from the last month, of course, was the release of the first teaser trailer for the upcoming Star Trek Picard television show. The Picard television series starring Sir Patrick Stewart is currently in production and looks to be on track for their late 2019 premiere. We still don't have a firm release date for that yet, but as soon as we know that, we will bring you that news. We also got some teases of the new uniform from the footage that was shown at the CBS Upfronts presentation where they show off their new shows coming for the coming television season. Now, Star Trek Picard, like Star Trek Discovery, will air on CBS All Access in the United States. In Canada, just like Discovery, it will be on the Space Channel and the Crave Television subscription service. But outside of the US and Canada, the show can be found on Amazon Prime. I do have plans to do an everything we know about Star Trek Picard in the coming weeks. Keep an eye out for that video. The Blu-ray and DVD release details for the Deep Space Nine documentary What We Left Behind by Iris Stephen Bear have been made public. You can find links below to pre-order the Blu-ray and the DVD from Amazon through my channel. The retail version will be released on August 6th in the US and Canada. Also detailed are the special features that will be on the Blu-ray release, which include an intro from Ira and the gang, a brief history of Deep Space Nine, What We Left Out, which are deleted scenes which total over 45 minutes of new footage, behind the scenes at the Variety photo shoot, HD remaster discussion which is a roundtable chat with the filmmakers about their experience in remastering Deep Space Nine for the Blu-ray, more from the fans, and the theatrical trailer. There is also a special edition available from Shout, which will have different special features, as well as the Indiegogo backer release, which will also have different special features from the regular release. I'll have details at the link in the description below. Also making news in recent weeks is an interview in which Chris Hemsworth explains why he turned down a role in Star Trek IV. At the time, it was rumored that it was due to salary negotiations, and while that might still be the case, the actor also gives some additional reasons for why he turned down reprising the role of George Kirk, James T. Kirk's father. According to Variety magazine, he turned down the next Star Trek sequel because he wasn't sold on the script. I didn't feel like we landed on a reason to revisit that yet, he reveals. I didn't want to be underwhelmed by what I was going to bring to the table. I'll have a link to the trekmovie.com coverage of that story in the description below as well. And here are the Star Trek releases you can look for through the month of June. On June 4th, we get Star Trek Shipyards, The Klingon Fleet. This is a book put out by Ben Robinson and the gang over at Eagle Moss, detailing the Klingon ships in Star Trek. Also on June 4th is the Star Trek Discovery 2020 calendar, featuring full-color images from Season 2 of Star Trek Discovery. On June 11th, we get the Star Trek vs. Transformers omnibus, collecting the issues of the Star Trek vs. Transformers miniseries from IDW, as well as the Star Trek The Original Series 2020. 20 calendar with full color photos from the original Star Trek series. On June 18th, there's another calendar due out. This is Star Trek The Next Generation Posters by Juan Ortiz. This 2020 calendar features removable posters by artist Juan Ortiz, highlighting various episodes of The Next Generation. And on June 25th is a calendar that I make sure to get every year. This is the Ships of the Line 2020 calendar featuring original artwork featuring the starships of Star Trek. And on June 26th, we get Star Trek The Q Conflict issue number 6. This is the final issue in the Q Conflict miniseries wrapping up that storyline. Next up from the Library of Mr. Atos, we take a look at what's been going on in the world of books this past month on my website, treklit.com. Over on treklit.com, this past month I've done reviews for the following novels. The Klingon Empire, A Burning House by Keith R. A. DeCandido. This is the fourth and final book in the IKS Gorkon slash Klingon Empire series featuring the crew of the IKS Gorkon. 
Star Trek The Next Generation, Triangle, Imzadi 2 by Peter David. This is a sequel of sorts to his best-selling novel, Imzadi. This one focuses on the Deanna troy Worf relationship and how that impacts Riker and Troy's relationship. Star Trek The Next Generation, Death in Winter by Michael Jan Friedman. This was the first Star Trek The Next Generation novel in the so-called post-Nemesis shared continuity. This picks up after Star Trek Nemesis and features the voyages of the crew of the starship Enterprise E. In this novel, Dr. Crusher, who is recently transferred to Starfleet Medical, is captured behind Romulan lines, and it's up to Captain Jean-Luc Picard to save her. Star Trek number 44, Vulcan's Glory by Dorothy D.C. Fontana, one of the original writers of Star Trek the original series. She is responsible for many classic episodes such as This Side of Paradise and Journey to Babel. This novel is the first to primarily feature the Pike era. Captain Christopher Pike is the captain of the Enterprise and he is tasked with finding an ancient Vulcan relic called the Vulcan's glory. The plot thickens when someone turns up murdered aboard the Enterprise. And finally, I also reviewed Voyager, Spirit Walk, book one of two, Old Wounds by Christy Golden. This is another book in the Voyager relaunch after the return of the USS Voyager to the Alpha Quadrant. Captain Chakotay takes command of the USS Voyager for her first mission as just a regular old ship in the Federation fleet. And over on the Literary Treks podcast, in the month of May, co-host Bruce Gibson and I did three episodes. Literary Treks 267, that word sacrifice keeps coming up, where we talk about the novel Burning Dreams by Margaret Wander Bonanno. Billed as the definitive Christopher Pike novel, this tells the story of Christopher Pike from his youth until the end of his story on Talos IV. Literary Treks 268, Andy Does the Consonants, I Do the Vowels, in which Bruce Gibson and I welcome co-author Michael A. Martin of Titan, The Red King, written by him and Andy Mangles. And finally, Literary Treks 269, Kellogg's Spock and Crisp, where Bruce Gibson and I talk about the Gold Key Archives, Volume 5. This is part one of a two-part episode. In this one, Bruce and I discuss the first three issues in the Gold Key Archives, Volume 5. These are usually hilarious. The Gold Key comics are a very weird part of Star Trek that we really have a great time talking about. And in recent book news, the cover for an upcoming new Star Trek Discovery novel has been revealed. The Enterprise War by John Jackson Miller tells the story of what the USS Enterprise was up to during Star Trek Discovery's first season and the Klingon War. I'll have links in the description below to pre-order that novel from Amazon. And finally, here are the birthdays among the major Star Trek cast for the month of June. Many Star Trek actors are celebrating birthdays in the month of June. On June 1st, René Aubergenois, best known as Deep Space Nine's Odo, celebrates his 79th birthday. On June 2nd, Sally Kellerman, Dr. Elizabeth Daner from the second original series pilot episode, turns 82. Also on June 2nd, Anthony Montgomery, Star Trek Enterprise's Travis Mayweather, turns 47. And also on June 2nd, Zachary Quinto, Spock of the Kelvin Timeline, turns 42. June 3rd sees the birthday of actress Susie Plaxon, who has played a number of roles over the years. Dr. Salar and Kalar on Star Trek The Next Generation, Q in Star Trek Voyager, and Tara in Star Trek Enterprise. June 5th is the birthday of Robert Lansing, notable guest star who played Gary Seven in Assignment Earth. He passed away in 1994 at the age of 66. Also on June 5th, Mark Warden celebrates his birthday. He is best known as Alexander Roshenko in a number of episodes of Deep Space Nine. June 7th sees two birthdays. First is Gary Graham, Ambassador Saval of Star Trek Enterprise, and Carl Urban, Dr. Leonard McCoy from the Kelvin Timeline. June 8th also sees a couple of notable guest star birthdays. First is James Darren, famous as Vic Fontaine in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And Alan Scarf, who played a number of roles. Mendak and Tokoth in Star Trek The Next Generation and Ogris in Voyager. June 12th, 1960 was Felicia M. Bell's birthday. She played Jennifer Sisko in Deep Space Nine. June 13th is the birthday of Malcolm McDowell, Dr. Tolian Soren, the man who killed Captain Kirk in Star Trek Generations. 
On June 13th, Ada Maris celebrates her birthday. She played Captain Erica Hernandez in Star Trek Enterprise. June 15th is the birthday of Robin Curtis, Savick in Star Trek 3 and 4, and Talera in Star Trek The Next Generation's Gambit two-parter. June 16th is the birthday of another Kelvin Timeline actor, John Cho, who played Hikaru Sulu. June 17th is the birthday of William Lucking, who played Pharrell in a couple of episodes of Deep Space Nine, and Harrod Sarr in the episode Bound of Star Trek Enterprise. June 19th sees two birthdays as well. Alan Van Sprang, who played Leland in season two of Star Trek Discovery, and Zoe Saldana, who played Lieutenant Uhura in the Kelvin Timeline films. June 22nd is the birthday of Tim Russ, most famous as Tuvok in Star Trek Voyager. Peter Weller celebrates his birthday on June 24th. He played John Frederick Paxton in Star Trek Enterprise and Admiral Marcus in Star Trek Into Darkness. June 27th is Kenneth Marshall's birthday. He played Michael Eddington in several episodes of Deep Space Nine. And finally, June 28th sees the birthday of Alice Kriege, the Borg Queen, in Star Trek First Contact and Star Trek Voyager's Endgame. Well, as always, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we can get back to this and have a regular uh, sort of roundup each month of the stuff going on in the Star Trek universe. I certainly enjoy doing this and I've kind of missed doing it. So really happy to get back to it. Uh, I have several plans for some new videos in the future, including book reviews, as well as the aforementioned everything we know about the Star Trek Picard series, which should be coming out soon as well. Thanks again so much for watching, and thank you to the Patreon supporters for all of your help. I really couldn't do it without you. I'll see you all in the next video, and until next time, as always, live long and prosper.